Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Designs by Dana. I am Dana and I'm also a Close to My Heart consultant. Currently I am working on the Christie's Beautiful Life 30 day challenge. Actually it's October so we're doing a 31 day challenge. I'm a little bit behind right now so I'm working on day 15. This is the sketch and it was created by Michelle, I think it's pronounced Buccina and she is from the Scattered Scrapper. So I'm gonna bring in my photo here, and I only have one photo and it's a four by six, so I already know that I'm going to change up the layout just slightly, but I do plan to keep this part of the sketch intact, and I think I am gonna use some flowers for this. So let me get this out of the way and go pull out some supplies and we'll be back and see what we can come up with. I'm going to start this project by bringing in my all-purpose mat so I can protect my work surface. I'm going to use my mocha shimmer brush to splatter just a little bit around where my title is going to be. I'm going to set that aside to dry and clean up my mat. Then I'm going to bring in some extra scrap paper. I did cut some flowers for this project with the 3D Flowers Thin Cuts, which are retired, unfortunately, but I do love the dimension that they add. And I did ink those with shortbread and paprika ink pads. So I'm gonna show you how I did that with just one flower petal so that you can see the technique. So I came in the center with the shortbread and I'm inking that from the center outward. And this is our new Close to My Heart blending brush, which is very, very soft. I really like them. Now that I've got the center inked, I'm going to use the paprika and come in on each petal from the outside, moving inward so that the paprika blends into the shortbread. That gives each petal just a little bit of two-tone color and it makes the flowers just really pop out and beautiful colored. I started to use papaya and I found out that the paprika really popped out better. Now I'm going to just layer both of these petals and before I do that I want to add my dimension first and you can use any tool just to curl those up. You can curl them down if you prefer and I'm going to add a little foam tape in between those because I like lots of dimension on my projects. And I'm putting the lighter petals on the top, so the darker on the side, and I can just adjust that curl as I need to. Now we have all of our papers cut, and there's my photo. And I'm going to dry fit this out first as I lay everything out, very similar to how the sketch was designed. Again, I'm using papers from the Crisp Air Paper Packet and the Backyard Bliss. So this was a really good combination to pull from. You'll notice that that wood grain paper is a little bit long. And I'm going to show you a little hack for how to make that work in the way that I wanted it to work. Now I'm going to dovetail this particular piece out. And my trick for dovetailing is to pinch the paper and I'm gonna cut from the corner inward. That gives me a perfectly symmetrical dovetail. Now this piece needs to be finished off with the inking and I did use mocha ink for all of my papers. So I'm just gonna add that into the dovetail section. Then I'm gonna take my paprika paper and this one's going to be torn. So I'm gonna have a little mixture of textures on my papers and I'm not going to ink this one. I'm going to go ahead and let that white show through so we can get rid of that mocha ink and get that out of the way. Now let's talk about this wood grain paper. So I want that to show through. Actually I'm going to back up a step and talk about the different ways that you can dovetail. So there's many ways people do it. And as I mentioned, I pinch. Now here I'm cutting up from the center and then I'm cutting in from each side. And you can see that works quite well. The problem is if you're not quite sure where the center is and you eyeball that incorrectly, what's gonna happen is you're not going to have 
a perfectly dovetailed image. So you can see as I lay that down how crooked it is. Another way to dovetail is just to cut in from each corner very carefully until your ends meet. I do this quite often for smaller pieces. And now I'm showing you that pinch method again for cardstock. Unfortunately, with the cardstock, it is a little bit thicker, so you can get that little fold in there. So it does tend to work a little bit better with the pattern paper. But I wanted you to see the different options and ways that you can dovetail. Okay, let's go back to that wood grain paper. I'm going to bring in my trimmer. Now, I like that this paper has the nail holes, and I really wanted to have the nail holes show on each side of my photo. So what I'm doing here is I'm lining up the nail holes with my cut line. Then I'm going to move that out one inch from the cut line and trim down on each side of the paper strip. So again, one inch from the cut line and then trim the extra off. Now the piece is still too long to fit under the photo. There you can see it's still too long, but I want that to be about one and three fourths inch on each side. So I'm gonna cut that at two inches just to give myself a little bit of room to tuck it under the photo on each side. And that will give, give me the illusion that the paper is going all the way across. We talk about doing this with scraps, but this works well with this technique because I want those nail holes on each side of my photo. I don't know why I felt that way, but for some reason I just really wanted them to show. Let's go back and put all of our papers back down and make sure everything is going to fit the way we want it to look. So you'll see as we tuck these pieces under, it fits perfectly. Awesome. Now we can bring in more embellishments. So we have the flowers that we already prepared and I'm going to lay those out. You'll see that I'm doing my threes. It's not a perfect triangle, but it does flow across the layout. And I've got my spot for my title where I have my shimmer brush underneath. And I'm going to add some flowers. These are some, I'm sorry, some leaves. These are from the Build a Flower die cut. And unfortunately, it's also retired, but this leaf is one of my favorites, and it's a go-to for me. And I like it because I can trim snips of it off and use the extra pieces as I desire. So I'm going to kind of dry fit those around the layout and decide where I want to snip those off and where I can use the extra pieces. You'll notice as I'm snipping those off, I'm keeping all of my scraps because even just one extra leaf will make a difference. And in the end, I do have one remaining and I find the perfect spot for that leaf. Once I'm done adding all of my leaves into the flowers and tucking them under, I also decide that I need some extra dimension within the leaves because my flowers are rolled up. So I'm going to roll up my leaves as well and I do this by using my thumbnail and I just kind of roll it around my thumbnail and it's the perfect size with the leaf and then I tuck those back under. Then I'm going to take the flower and again I want lots of dimension so I'm going to add some foam tape to that flower and I'll have a perfect spot to pop that up right in those leaves. Let's get this all glued down. Okay, I have everything glued down and adhered. I also, off camera, added some little chipboard buttons to the center of my flowers. And since I have those four little holes in the buttons, I didn't like that. So I came in with my gold stickles and very carefully, I'm gonna hold this up. Hopefully you can see that on camera but I very carefully filled in each of those holes with the stickles. So hopefully that's gonna show up for you, but that just turned out really beautiful. And then I just added some stickles throughout the 
layout as embellishments instead of pulling out my gold gems, which I had planned to do instead. The buttons came out of the die cut wood grain buttons. So they're really easy just to pop right out and they come in a variety of sizes. I also wanted to show you that the title for the layout came out of the Backyard Bliss die cuts and um, it just they matched really well so I wanted to kind of show you how you can mix and match things together. So this is the finished layout. I'm quite happy with that. I still need to add my journaling so I need to think about what I want to say there. But other than that, um, everything is completed. I hope you've enjoyed that and learning some of my hacks about how to extend that paper to make it look the way you want and some different ways to dovetail out your um, paper strips and figure out what works best for you. Thank you so much for watching my video today. If you like what you saw, please hit that thumbs up like button and as the well as the subscribe button i really appreciate the support and that lets youtube know to show you more of similar videos as well as mine so thank you again and we will see you soon bye